In this video, we consider whether um, decidable languages are closed under subset. So if we know that L1 and L2 are decidable, let's consider some language L such that L1 is a subset of L, which is a subset of L2. We ask the question, is it always the case that L must be decidable? Okay, so when we're given a question like this, is it always the case that L must be decidable? Um, either prove that yes, it works for every such L, or provide some counterexample. Okay, so we're going to provide a counterexample where we have a decidable L1 and a decidable L2, um, but L is undecidable. So let's consider um, L to be ATM. Let's consider L1 to be the empty language. And let's let L2 be sigma star. And in this case, um, where sigma is the alphabet for um, Turing machine descriptions. Okay, so what I'm saying here is that when we create um, a description, oops, and strings. Okay, what I'm trying to say here is that uh, sigma star, sigma is going to be the alphabet that we're going to use to define um, or to describe Turing machines and strings. So in other words, um, sigma would be the alphabet that uh, the strings in ATM, which are a description of a machine, so let's just remember here. Okay, so I'm saying sigma is the alphabet that we use for strings in ATM. Okay, so first thing to note is that L is a subset of sigma star. Okay, this is, this is obvious by the way we've chosen sigma star. And further, the empty set is a subset of L. Okay, the empty set is a subset of everything. Right, I can choose nothing and it's a subset. So here we have L1, L, L2. Okay, and this relationship holds. Um, to remind ourselves that L1 and L2 are decidable, we can construct DFAs. Um, there's one for L1, and there's one for L2. Right? So L1 and L2 are decidable, but L, we know for a fact, decidable. So it is not always the case that um, if L is a superset of a decidable language and a subset of another decidable language, that L must also be decidable.